All right, next up, we are going to start working on the underbody storage doors. This is gonna be super exciting. We've gotta build a frame for them to live in. And then after we build the frame, then we can actually build the doors because I'm not really too sure what the exact size is once the frame is installed on the inner dimensions. And so we'll have to measure the door out based on that. So let's get started. So I've drawn out some plans for these doors uh, just to get some rough measurements. And something to note is that we've got hat channel here, hat channel over there on that area, but there's no hat channel here. So affixing a piece of angle iron or some sort of upright support will be kind of difficult here. So I grabbed uh, some of the hat channel that we used from the bus demolition when we took out the windows and we were making those big windows that are on the side. Well, a few of those ribs came out, a few of the hat channel, and they're gonna work perfectly for this situation. So we're gonna cut these to size and get them installed. First things first, I'm gonna measure the area that these hat channels are gonna live in. Nice, perfect fit. So I gotta admit, I've never actually built storage doors like these ever before. So I am just uh, going off of what feels good when making these. Um, I've forced a lot of doors uh, whenever I was a firefighter uh, for forcible entry of buildings uh, that were on fire and then also in training and stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of take what I've learned about how doors work and make a door that's pretty damn strong. Like I don't want this to be easy to force or anything like that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Nice, that fits really, really good. Perfect, nice. It gives us plenty of wiggle room. So for this particular piece, we're going to bolt it, or probably use body bolts, um, to the frame here. Um, we could possibly do through bolts, uh, but then that would require a lot of thinking. Um, <laughs> It might be stronger to do through bolts. We'll see. Uh, but first, we're going. We know that we need to drill a couple holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. That looks good. And we'll do the same to the other side that has that hat channel that we're working with. I'm placing the bolts so that they're in a very convenient place to bolt on, because if it's not in an easy place, then it'll make it more difficult and less fun to do. I'm actually gonna move that one down just a little bit so we've got more room for the drill. Make it bigger so I remember. So I find that when doing any new project, 
I tend to start off going a little bit slower than I'd like to. And I think the reason for that is because I haven't really done one of these yet, not completely through for the doors. And so I'm doing a lot of calculating and a lot of uh, theorizing like, hey, theoretically, how is this gonna fit? So right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the thickness that we have for the square tubing, which is one inch square tubing for the door and the distance between the front skin of the bus and where the weather stripping is gonna compress. Now with weather stripping, you don't really wanna do full compression on it because over time that'll it'll lose its elasticity. So having maybe like a quarter to a half of full compression on it, it'll give it more life long-term. And so I'm doing a lot of calculations before I start screwing all this together, welding, or however we're going to put it together. I haven't really decided yet. I think there's probably going to be some bolts involved. Um, but trying to see where does the door sit in this plane right here because there's there's a lot of wiggle room that's available uh, because we've got this piece of angle iron here that can be slid forward or backwards but I really want it to meet up in the bottom so that both the bottom edge and the left edge and the top edge and the right edge are all flush on the same plane and the reason for that is because with weather stripping you want a really nice even seal so I'm working with the measurements, working with what we have, uh, and just trying to figure out this problem. And uh, it's not really that big of an issue other than just trying to calculate through so that it goes together smoothly. And that's the goal of this, is to go together smoothly, even though the first one takes a little extra time, that's fine, because I know that if I get it right on the first one, then I know that doors two, three, and four are gonna go together that much smoother. So that's why I calculate a lot and take time to measure, measure, measure. Hello, warm fire. You're keeping me nice and toasty today. Thank you so much, even though it is a whopping Whoa, it is two degrees Celsius in here, folks. Yeah, that's uh, just above 32. It looks like about 33 Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. However, the wood stove really makes it feel a lot warmer because it dries out the air a little bit. So I really like that. All right, so the weather stripping that we're using for the underbody storage is this safe edge style. So it's got the kind of U-shaped safe edge on it, and then it's got kind of a D bulb with two little flanges on the top and the bottom. So what those do is they help to divert water that's coming, you know, sideways through the door, through the to, through the crack, and it prevents water from entering the doorway. And so there's a lot of different types of the safe edge where you can have the ball or the bulb on the side, on the top, or on the other side. And there's a lot of different shapes depending on your application. Oh, and you might wanna know how this stuff works. So in this case, we're using angle iron, one and a half inch, uh, and it is one eighth inch thick. So what, what you do is you just push the, uh, the weather stripping onto the angle iron like that, and there's the little jaws in there that holds it nice and firmly in place. And so that will provide the seal when the door closes, it'll provide a compression seal on that that prevents the water from entering. So that's kind of how that looks whenever it is installed. You just keep on pushing it around and then you could hit it on whenever it's all said and done, tap it with a hammer or something and it seats it really nice and flush in there. Let's see if we can get a visual on that for you. Yeah, there it is. Look at that, look at it. So when looking at this, uh, this edge here, originally I was a little concerned that uh, the distance from the front edge of the skin was about one and three quarters, while our square tube is only one inch. But 
something to keep in mind is that the weather stripping shouldn't compress too much. And I know I've talked about this just a second ago, but even when the door just barely touches it, that's at one inch. And with the slam latch installed, it'll compress it just a little bit more and that should be perfect. So it looks like the measurements here are gonna work out great. 10 degrees colder over here. I know, right? So the next piece, we've got the bottom and the sides done and we need a top header piece to go up through here. This guy here will be something like that. So we'll just let him hang out there. And Aaron had a great idea for how to connect it up in here. Up in here? Right so up there's here. a gap here, which is kind of annoying because if this piece goes like this, then there's not really, like once you get away from the hat channel here, this is all open stretch. So I thought, hey, We've done this before where we've taken two pieces of angle iron and we've backed them up and Brian welded them together. Why couldn't we take a couple small pieces, maybe four, we could do, you know, one, two, three, four, space them out on each door and just do a couple little pieces that basically make this piece of angle iron look like a T in a couple spots. And those are attachment points for the hat channel. What's cool about that is we did that in the battery bank uh, rack. Yep. So that'll be the same sort of thing. So if you haven't seen that video, it's up here somewhere. So we got a bit of a mock-up situation going on here. Brian just nailed it. The idea was to set up our angle iron against the hat channel here so that it shows us what the actual width would look like. It lines up perfectly with this bottom edge. And Brian was just telling me like, this is our constant here this piece of metal the whole way along because it's not going to move from there. That's it. That's its home. That's its home. Okay. Yeah. So with having these two pieces mocked up, now we'll be able to put this up higher, this top piece and see if we need to notch these two hat channels that are here and right over there. Okay. This goes against the edge. Yeah. Okay. And so now we can see how much of this hat channel needs to actually be notched um, or not notched. Whoa! That looks pretty horizontal. Animal, Garcia. That's pretty horizontal. Yeah. You manimaled that. Thanks, Ms. Dick. Let me nice. check my hole with. Check your hole. Yes. That'll work. Almost. Almost there you go. Yay! Nice. Look at that. Now it's uh, throwing a few nuts. Uh, this isn't the final resting place uh, right now, uh, so but we'll get it clamped nuts. up. That way it doesn't move on us while we're positioning the top piece. I'll get the nuts. Got him. Got him. And we'll probably end up using Nylox on these. Um, and if we don't use nylocks, we'll definitely, regardless, use, we'll use thread locker. <laughs> and because these are made of metal, there will be thermal bridging. Um, <laughs> so just for anybody who's wondering about that, um, yeah, definitely we'll have plenty of that going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's always thermal bridging, it's a bus. And it's made of metal, not wood. Yeah. Yeah. 
So this one's gonna be a little bit different because we're going to use self tappers here, but we're gonna pre-drill the hole because historically self tappers work best with a pre-drilled hole. It's less work on their little self tapping noses. <laughs> Self tapperuski? Self tapperuski. What are these guys called? Self tappers. What? Hex hex head self tapping screws. Gotcha. There we go. Done. All right, now we'll check it for squareness. Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty fucking dead nut. Pretty Excuse nut. me, sorry kids. Disculpe. Disculpe. That is pretty effing square nuts. <laughs> That's square nuts right there. That's cute. See what that guy's doing? It's measuring. About 19 inches. The reason why I'm measuring is because we need to make sure that the water heater could fit through. <laughs> Right? <laughs> everything we're gonna have to cut in half to get out of here. <laughs> Fucking everything. No, I think that'll that'll work good. How tall is that little bugger? Uh this was about 19 inches, but <clears throat> he's not that right. little shorty. I don't think he's 19 inches uh deep. Here tall. Drop this. We should check. Well, I guess we could well, tip we, him back and yeah. slide him in. We're gonna check the water heater. About 19 inches tall. Come on! He's 14 thick. Yeah, I think he's like 14 thick. Yeah. It'll fit. What if we cut this off? Cut it higher. Until it is as tall as that. Yeah. And then we'll be able to sink that whole piece of angle iron. Well, or almost up as high. Yeah. Just lounging around under the bus. <laughs> Like a, leisure, a leisurely lounge under the bus. It's my man cave. What can I say? Man caves are meant for lounging. <laughs> right now, I'm just kind of marking this. Uh, can you see that, guys? There we go. Let's get some more light for you. There you go. So I'm just marking the hat channel because I visually saw that there was about a half an inch gap or so, but if I, I want to leave a little bit there on the front just for uh, support of the skin above it. And so we're going to notch out probably about half an inch or so just to give it wiggle room. And this is just a recommendation line, not necessarily true factoid line. That way we got room for maneuvering. Go straight up there. We'll just cut that out, and then we'll be able to use uh, the brackets on the uh, on the back side of the angle iron to uh, to bolt it up to there. Should be uh, closer to it at that point. Boom! Yeah. Yeah. Now let's dry fit this. Oh yeah. Here I am. She is right. Oh, look at this nasty old insulation. I'm sorry. I say fuck. All right, hold that in and I'm gonna come backwards. That fit better? Oh, it does fit better on your side. I think that's probably perfect. Cool. Yeah. It seems like a nice height. Yeah. That's flush. All right, let go for a second. That okay, looks cool. good. And that's close enough to flush. We just need it like probably that. Probably like a miniature gap. Probably not even a sixteenth in 19 between. Nineteen and seven eighths. And then, thank you. Nineteen and seven eighths. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd goes wild! Slow cut! Slow yeah. cut! Yeah. We need a win! We need a win. Guys. Don't knock it down. <laughs> All right. So now that what? means that I notched both of them perfectly. You dirty dog. Kind of blind. Dirty dog. Like I put it up there and then I was Close like... Close your eyes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We gotta turn this camera off or move it or something. Yeah. We got mail. Thanks, Rick and Karen. 
What an awesome surprise. Yeah. We are super lucky to get to meet Rick and Karen. They're also building a school bus also. and uh, converting a school bus into a tiny home on wheels right here in Ontario. And they came to check out what we're doing because uh, they were grabbing some Ooh. parts and stuff uh, from a guy that we get a lot of parts from. Yeah, RBD. So let's see what he got. <gasps> Holy moly. <laughs> so cool. So it's open here. It looks like it's Shishugi Bond. It does look Shishugi Bond. Holy smokes. Did you guys make that? Look at that. Oh, it's so cool. This is awesome. This kind of, go this totally goes with the look and feel of our schoolie also. Totally. Uh, Cause this looks like a little bit of live edge wood. Oh. Aww, what a nice gift. This is super cool. Cool bottle opener. Yeah, thanks guys. We really appreciate it. Very fitting yeah. from a brewmaster. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Thanks guys. It's so cool to get to meet people and then have people send us stuff. How crazy is that? Yeah, this is by far wow. not expected at all, but no. it's, it's fun to be able to like yeah. share your art with others. Aww. We love homemade stuff. Yeah. That is so cool. Thanks guys. <laughs> Lots of love. So our nozzle isn't fitting up nice into like underneath the gutter. Um, just because the shape of the caulking tube and yada yada. So I'm trying to clean it up, but once you're dirty, you're dirty. Like once you wipe with one finger, then it's filthy and this stuff's like super stringy. So it's just stringing all over the place. So we're gonna try to figure out a better way to goop this up under the trough so we don't have to touch it. Now we gotta clean it up. So I'm thinking that potentially we might be able to use this clear tubing. Like if we could get this nozzle shoved in there, then we might be able to use it as an extension potentially. Um, but I'm not too sure about that. We'll have to, we'll have to see. I don't know if this one's thick enough. Let me see if we got another one. Here, I'll show you guys. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It looks nasty. Not so bad now that we've cleaned it up a bit, but it's like, I don't know if you can see that. Um, but we gotta get it under there. Here, but we gotta get it under there to stop drafts and stuff. So I found this piece of uh, clear tubing and I'm gonna see if we can get it up further. <laughs> I might cut it at just a little bit shorter though, just so yeah. that there's less runway. I'm gonna wanna paint that again, I think. The edge, and you can't paint this silicone crap. It's kind of cleaned up. Oh, that looks good. You can actually see the full coverage in there. Cool. I'm just trying to get the silicone off the face of the back of the bus. Now we have silicone on our window. All right, try, time to try out the caulk extender. It's a winner? Yeah. Okay, kids, so Brian's got the extender nozzle on. And he said it's going really great. What do you think, Bri? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I found that viewing from the side that it's already been applied. So viewing from this side, as I'm going this way, I could see where it's connected, the eaves to the skin of the bus. Um, I think this is, you know, the, the probability of, of uh, of water actually getting two inches up there is super low, but this is gonna give us peace of mind and also reduce the probability of insects finding their way in. Or heat drafts. We don't want our heat drafting out or cold drifting in, if that makes sense. It does make sense. How's it going up there, Aaron? <laughs> this is such a mess, <laughs> but good. It's going good. This is a messy job. So I'm the cleanup crew and Brian gets it up in there. But it, I think that that's gonna be a really nice seal. Oh yeah, it's it's yeah. touching both the eaves and the wall at the same time. Yay. Yeah. Cool. So. All right, so even though the windows didn't have problems themselves, I know like this one, for instance, right here um, in the top edge, we had to use a little extra weather stripping because 
our DIY skin wasn't the flattest because it was the roof material. So I imagine if we had used sheet metal uh, that was pretty thick from, that was brand new, we probably wouldn't have had the ripple effect that we were getting. Um, but because of that, we had to use extra weather stripping on that corner for sure. So what I was thinking is if we did a bead of caulking from like the top, the bottom edge here, up around the top and around the top and then back down, then that should allow any water that comes down to drain off and not penetrate. So um, there's room between the glass and the skin that we could put like a little covert bead of caulking there. So I'm gonna do that real quick and see if that helps. It probably will long-term. Passing the torch. With that drill comes great responsibility. Comes with big holes. You said the big dot, right? Yeah, big dot. That's victory right there, folks. It only took four minutes. <laughs> So now that the bracket's welded on, um, we're gonna work on the pieces that go on this edge, trim up this, uh, and then work on getting the hat channel situated. Uh, but we have to wait on that because we once we have these pieces cut and that notched, then um, maybe we'll get the holes drilled for the hat channel and then um, we'll paint all the pieces. Uh, so we're trying to work on just this one door. I know that I've cut pieces for all the other doors for the bottom left and rights, uh, but we're gonna continue to finish this door, make sure we like the design before we go and replicate it all the way across. going up there? Interesting. <laughs> it's going pretty good. I'm just trying to not make a mess. <laughs> Looks like you're doing a good job. Pretty good. Oh, there we go. Yeah, inject that seam. Just make it watertight, babe. Bumpy in there. Sure. Oh, let's blame it on the temperature. I bet you it's the temperature. 
For sure. Well, that's my first guess. I gotta say. Yeah, it's only like five degrees in here. What does this thing want? Yeah. <laughs> it wants 15 to 30 degrees. That's probably what the problem is. I would say it's temperature. We're doing it anyways. Got a deadline here, folks. Okay, so this goes against everything that I've ever learned as a painter. You never dip your brush directly into any can or vessel, but we're gonna do it because- You're such a rebel. Because we're gonna do it. I couldn't do it. Double dipping the brush into the can is like the ultimate sin. If there's metal shards that get in the can and then I taint the whole can with rust and- Then you got pink paint. I got pink paint. Here we go. Just the edgy edge. The edgiest of the edges. This is such a nice little bowl. If um, you've ever seen a hairstylist use one of these, this is called a tint bowl. They're great for applying hair color, but also really nice for painting. <laughs> really nice for painting, I love it. So the hobo gloves are not working out too well. I've already cut my thumb through the protection of the thumb material on this hobo glove here. Oh, no. Hobo Pro is not so great. So what happened was uh, I finished cutting a piece of angle iron on the big chop saw. And then um, I was cleaning off the end just with my gloved hand. And I went with my thumb because normally that's what I do. It's not well, a glove. Yeah, when you have hobo pro on, it's a no go for metal work, apparently. But these gloves are so comfortable now. Like they're broken in finally. Finally. Yeah. Mine still feel like pretty firm. Yeah. But that shows you right for getting the same gloves as me and trying to match me. Yeah. And it just shows that I use uh, those five fingers more <laughs> than these five fingers. You may as well cut those ones off. Yeah. Use useless fingers. Actually, I would have more dexterity. So maybe I'll just roll with bandages on my fingers, uh, even though the other fingers aren't cut yet in preparation. So the bandage is already there. Get back to work, Garcia. Okay, my next task is to create like a plug for this guy right here, little humpity humps. So we've got a piece of humpity hump. Ding that we cut off the bus. So what I'm gonna do is put this on a piece of angle iron. Like so. And then I'm gonna move it out to the furthest part of this little piece of angle iron. And I'm gonna just trace the inside of the humps. And then I'm gonna do it on this side too. Cause we need four of these. So I'll do that there as well. And then I'm going to take the angle grinder and just grind away until I make the little humps. And then Brian is going to, um, he's going to weld those pieces and cap the ends. 
And did anybody mention it is mighty cold today? Like the wind, I can feel a breeze in here blowing through the barn. It is freezing. All right, so we were having this little issue with paint drying in uh, frozen temperatures. So we went ahead and set up this, this uh, wood burning stove here with the Paint Dryer 2000. That's right, this is the most efficient way to dry paint in cold weather conditions. Currently we got the temperature up to about six degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's right. It's about a little over 40 Fahrenheit up in the barn today and the paint is drying wonderfully. I mean, look at that. It is almost not even tacky. Most of it's pretty well done. These goober gobbers, goober gobbers, still got a little bit of work to go, but they'll be all right. Meanwhile, the ones in the rattle can, those guys are smooth, they're dry, thin coat of paint, just enough to stop the rust. All right, y'all. So the ends of the rub rails here are open and we were gonna close them up. Aaron made these cute little designs that I'm gonna weld into there. But first we need to clean this edge with the grinder so that uh, the weld will stick. Cause weld doesn't like to stick on paint too, too much. It starts to burn. So I'll clean those up and uh, we weld these on. Whew. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the driver's side of the bus, but because it's the dark side of the bus, the videography just hasn't been very good over there. Um, so I'm just gonna rinse and repeat two more times. Same spots over there as over here. I really like that we made the, um, the doors the same size or at least the openings because it's helped to batch the work versus like trying to make different size doors, then it would have to be a lot more measurements because you basically would have to measure each one. I did measure each one. Um, both Aaron and I were measuring with the measuring tape, uh, but regardless, like I think that having just two door sizes is perfect for our situation. So. It's coming along good. This project is a difficult one. Uh, there's a lot of math involved, a lot of adding, subtracting, uh, three-dimensionally. It's not just on a single plane. It's also uh, depth has to do with it because uh, we've got tolerances that we have to deal with. Uh, but it's, it's coming out. And uh, I think the huge takeaway for me is like, I'm not a quitter. Aaron's not a quitter. We're both just like so dedicated to making this build happen. And uh, even when stuff gets tough, like, uh, you know, reaching out to friends and they give support and even everybody in the comments, like we really appreciate all the support that everybody's been showing uh, because this does take a toll on us. Uh, Last night, we stayed up till one in the morning, building all the pieces, painting them for all, for the framing of this. And uh, so we spent a couple days working at this one project. And it's like, come on, paint dry. I know it's cold in here, but shoot. Which is why we set up that old uh, word burning stove, 2000 paint dryer system. And uh, now it's almost completely dry, so. Whew. Aaron's gonna help set up all this here in a second. I'm just trying to get these finishing touches done uh, before she 
pops back in. But yeah, yeah, it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna need some Nipro. <laughs> All right, so these pieces up here did excellent. They are no longer sticky icky, and we put them back <laughs> down in their appropriate rows because all of them are pre-drilled, and so they are all custom pieces. Thank goodness for the fire. That was an incredible drying rack. Yes. Really good. It only took a day and a half. Yeah. I called it the wood burning stove 2000 drying rack. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a dehydrator, but yeah. for metal yeah. paint. You're doing a good job there, wood burning stove. We'll feed you more today. Nom, nom, nom. You did a good job, you get fed. There you go. <laughs> Back in the bag you go. And that's her trick to saving shitty brushes, folks. Just put it in the fridge. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Get cocking all over your gloves. All right, you ready to commit? We're committing. Nice. Is that nice? I think it needs to come this way a little bit. Your way? Yeah. You ready to push it? Pull it up. There we go. Yeah, right there. Okay. Oh, that's better. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Well done, silly. Thank you, silly. So the wood burning stove 2000, or should we call it 2021? Wood burning stove 2021, uh, angle iron warmer to dry the paint quicker. Uh, discolors white paint, by the way. So <laughs> this edge here was hanging out towards the front, and I think that it got a little bit of smoky tinge. Smoldered. To it. Smoky. We're gonna call it creamy. It's a little creamy. Yeah. So that's hilarious. It's like an ombre effect. Ombre. Look at that. Look at that. What else? All right, we're going up like this. Okay, so yeah, this is not the one I need for this. Oh, okay, wow. That looks good. See ya. Big door. There we go. Well, the white doesn't look bad on camera. Up close, this is a pretty shoddy paint job, but who's, who's complaining? That line this is up. our basement. Yep. That lines up. Okay, so something that I ran into on this one was that these bolts are about a quarter inch too long Ooh. for the next piece. Okay. So I went into Bob's bucket of tricks over there yeah. and uh, found some odds and ends washers. Like, look at this this washer here. Oh, it looks like a nunchuck, or not yeah. a nunchuck. What are those throwing things called? Throwing star? Yeah. Yeah. That has a name. Uh, it's like a... A ninja star. Ninja star? Yeah. So I was thinking of using those if there's room <laughs> on here. Oh, to, to push it to back. To just pull it back just oh. a little bit. Yeah, why not? So let's see if there's room. You found four or three ninja stars? Three, but one doesn't have the ninja star. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could stack some other big washers. So looking at that, that's still sticking out too much. So let's pop that out and add some reinforcement. I'll add another bob reinforcement right here. We'll actually <laughs> stack this the opposite direction. It'll look nicer. It'll look cuter. It'll we look got a bunch of hand-me-down bits and bobs from my past grandpa Bob. 
Um, Rest in peace, and it's, Bob. It's been like a magical thing to be able to like go open up his drawers and like look through all these little bits and pieces of things. Um, and then it's like the perfect amount of what we need is there. It's a beautiful reminder that the universe always has your back. Yeah. Yep. I'll button. show you what Brian was talking about. So the bolts need to stay, I think, behind this frame, kind of, yeah. or back enough. So when so the next the piece of metal, when it caps it, they don't run into each other. Cool. Pretty Here, cool, huh? Show them from your side, the ninja stars. And that's what that stack looks like, that washer stack. And rather than go and buying uh, new bolts uh, that are about a quarter inch shorter, um, I was just like, you know what? We already have these bolts and they're really good ones. There's 3816 grade eight, so they're pretty freaking strong. Probably overkill for this application. That's all right, it'll work. That's a lot of thread locker. That puppy's not going nowhere. No, no, it's not going nowhere. Now the ultimate combo would be to use thread locker on a nylock nut backed up with a lock washer. <laughs> just in case you really want to make sure that thing's not going anywhere. And if the nylock nut had one of the crown uh, splits in it, that you can throw a wire through the actual shaft of the uh, of the bolt, oh, wow. then you're sure that it, it'll stay forever. <laughs> but that's only if you're super paranoid about stuff backing out. If you just don't want it to back out, just use a little thread locker, you'll be all right. <laughs> thread stuff. Nice. That's super strong. <laughs> this fire was almost out. It's almost out. We're putting it back on. Welcome back. Hey, thanks. I just got back from my side hustle. Oh, damn. Make some cash for the project. Yep. Maybe that'll turn back on. Yeah, I think it's I think it will. On. It's yeah, promising. Yeah. I see smoke production. Smoking. Smoking.